Hello everyone and welcome to my July book haul. Uh, this, there is subject to be a second one. It just depends on what I read for the rest of the month as far as part of a series. Or if I read a book by an author and that's the only book by the author that I have and then I want another book from that author. So there is subject to be more, but I just don't want these to be super, super long. So I'm going to go ahead and do this haul. So today, as of filming, is July 18th. I've already got plenty. Um, I did cancel one of my book boxes. I went ahead and just unboxed it. I did not film an unboxing. I canceled Romance Reveal, unfortunately. Their price is going up a month. So I was paying about $66 a month for six books. It's going up to like what, like 86 or 96, something like that. Uh, so I went ahead and canceled that. I will save money and then gift myself those boxes every now and then on occasion. Um, and part of why I canceled that is there's a different subscription I wanted to do that's going to be like half of that, but it's not a book subscription. It's a crafting subscription for crocheting to learn, to continue to learn crocheting. So um, I'm doing that, going to be doing that instead. So that's where we're at. Um, and I'll, let's go ahead and tell you what books I got so far for the month. So, these, one day I was just scrolling through Instagram, um, rewarding myself for paying off my Visa credit card, and I got these two books. One is a novella, Cozy Mystery. They are both Cozy Mysteries, but I got these from Amazon. I have Four Leaf Felony, so this is a Cozy Mystery by Tonya Capes, I'm guessing is how that is said. So these are holiday cozy mysteries. Let me adjust that. There we go. So we can, that's a little bit better. Okay. Smiling our eyes aren't shining upon Violet Reinhammer. Violet Reinhammer finally got the break, big break she's been waiting for. She got the interview of a lifetime and it is only a plane ride away. Things take a twisty turn after Violet discovers a dead body in the airplane's bathroom. With a forced emergency landing, she finds herself stranded in the tiny seaside mountain village of Holiday Junction. Holiday Junction loves all things holiday, and currently the town is painted green for their annual Shamrock Festival. Unfortunately, the NTSB has grounded any flights in or out of Holiday Junction until the crime scene is wrapped up, leaving Violet scrambling to get her to her interview. Violet takes on the investigation and enlists the help of some of the locals, new friends, and a cute security guard to help her solve the mystery. Join Violet, Sharice, uh, Rhett, and a lineup of new as well as familiar characters from a camper and criminal cozy mystery series as they try to catch a killer to get Violet to her dream job. So these other ones I have not read. Um, the from a camper and criminals cozy mystery series but I don't think that'll matter because it's a whole new series so this is that's a note from the author 141 pages so and I think this will be fun and the second cozy mystery I got was the body in the bookstore this is book number one in a secret bookcase mystery by Ellie Alexander one it's a cozy mystery and then it involves books it's like, sold. And I like the synopsis of this one. Behind the shelves of the secret bookcase, where the sun slants through the windows into onto rows of classic crime novels, a body lies. Bookseller Annie Murray is thrilled when the mystery-themed book festival she sets up to revive the dwindling fortunes of her workplace and sanctuary seems poised for success, but events take a shocking turn when a body is discovered hidden behind the shelves, and it's revealed that the victim is Annie's old college acquaintance. Determined to ensure the festival's success and save the small town of Redwood Grove from a killer, Annie begins piecing together clues that will help with the help of her friends, but as the list of suspects grows longer, a local boutique owner, an envious old classmate, a bitter ex-boyfriend, Annie is drawn deeper into the case. With the aid of her old criminology professor turned detective, can Annie unmask the murderer before they turn her festival into a real-life whodunit? 
This next book um, I ordered from the, I believe, the author's website. I saw this advertised on Instagram and I don't know, there was just something about it. Aesthetically, the sprayed edges are pleasing. <laughs> and then I like the title. So I'm talking about Pen Pal by J.T. Geisinger. I'm guessing is how that is said. So it is black sprayed edges, except for right here. <laughs> it says, I'll wait forever if I have to. I thought that was pretty cool. And then plus the title, it kind of made me feel a little nostalgic. I remember growing up and pen pals were huge. Unfortunately, I never had a pen pal, but I always wanted a pen pal, but I was never able to get a pen pal. So a little bummed by that, but I just remember really thinking how cool it would be to have a pen pal. This one says, I'll wait forever if I have to. It was signed by Dante, the man, a man I didn't know. Out of simple curiosity, I wrote back to him what exactly he was waiting for. His reply, you. I told the mystery man he had the wrong woman. He said he didn't. I said we'd never met, but he said I was wrong. We went back and forth, exchanging letters every week that grew increasingly more intimate. Then one day, the letters stopped. When I found out why, it was already too late. Dante was at my doorstep. And nothing on earth could have prepared me for what happened next. This next one I got, there was something from Amazon that I needed to get delivered ASAP. Um, it it was just, yeah, I'm not going to go into details, <laughs> the details there. It just needed to be delivered right away. And so I could have overnight delivery. So it was there the morning that I woke up that I needed it. And But in order to do that, I had to spend like $25 to get it to free overnight delivery. And so I went and um, I just had to spend a little bit more. So I got a book and the book that said that would qualify and push it over the edge for that is Emily Henry's Funny Story. So I have read one book by Emily Henry and that was Happy Place. Thoroughly enjoyed that one. So I got this one. It says, it's a funny story. Daphne always loved the way her fiance Peter told their story. How they met on a blustery day, fell in love over an errant hat, and moved back to his lakeside hometown to begin their life together. He really was good at telling it, right up until the moment he realized he was actually in love with his childhood best friend, Petra. Which is how Daphne begins her new story. Stranded in beautiful Waning Bay, Michigan, without friends or family, but with a dream job as a children's librarian that barely pays the bills. Ain't that the truth of things nowadays? And proposing to be roommates with the only person who could possibly understand her predicament, Petra's ex, Miles Nowak. Nowak. Mm. Scruffy and chaotic, with a penchant for taking solace in the sounds of heartbreak love, ba uh, love ballads, Miles is exactly the opposite of practical buttoned-up Daphne, whose co-workers know so little about her they have a running bet that she's either FBI or in witness protection. The roommates mainly, mainly avoid one another until one day, while drowning their sorrows, they form a tenuous friendship and a plan. If said plan also involves posting deliberately misleading photos of their summer adventures together, well, who could blame them? But it's all just for show, of course, because there's no way Daphne could actually start her new chapter by falling in love with her ex-fiance's new fiance's ex, right? That <laughs> sounds messy, and I think it'll be fun. I did enjoy the other book I read by Emily Henry, so I am looking forward to this. So this month in July, I read Caution Tape, which was co-authored by Molly Doyle and J.D. Midnight. Really enjoyed the writing. I did look for another book by J.D. Midnight. Did not find one that I could get or that was available at the time, but I will keep my eye out. But I did find a book by Molly Doyle. And this one's a little novella, <laughs> Order of the Unseen. It says, we will keep you safe. And that is Scream for Us. This is a little itty bitty thing. This is 89 pages. <laughs> so... Good girl Quinn didn't expect her night to turn into mayhem once she stepped into a legendary Halloween party. After needing a quick rescue from a stranger, she finds herself locked in a captivating game of infatuation with three masked men. Her one demand, the game ends at dawn. As desire collides with danger, how much can Quinn take before the sun comes up? Will her condition of only one night be enough, or will her masked men 
leave their mark. Um, I imagine it's going to be very dark. Caution tape was very dark. So it'll be interesting to see how this little novella stacks up to that. This next book is another cozy mystery, and this is actually book number two. So in July, I read book number one, Rocky Road to Ruin by Mary Ellen, and this is book number two. I really liked the first book, so I really wanted the second one to have on deck when I'm ready to get back into this. And this one is Mint Chocolate Murder, again by Mary Ellen, an ice cream shop mystery. When utterly delightful ice cream shop manager Riley Rhodes is summoned to Penniman, Connecticut's Moy Mole Castle, it's the cherry on top of a successful summer season. The Gothic pile built an eccentric New England Gilded Age millionaire has been transformed into a premier arts colony by Maud Monaco, a reclusive former supermodel. As part of Moy Mole's Fall Arts Festival, Maud is throwing a fantasy ice cream social and hires Riley to whip up unique treats to celebrate the opening of an exhibit by Adam Blasco, a photographer as obnoxious as he is talented. As Maud's art world friends arrive for the festival, gossip swirls around Blasco, who has a dark history of obsession with his models. Riley's curiosity and instincts for sleuthing are piqued, and she wonders at the hold the cold-hearted photographer has over the mistress of Moy Mull. But when Adam is found dead behind the locked door of Moy Mull's dungeon, Riley realizes there's more than one suspect who'd want to put the malicious photographer on ice. This next book I got because in this stack here are um, the ones I got from Romance Reveal Book Box, one of the books was like the second or the third in a series. So of course I got the first, had to get the first book. And the first book is Ruthless Rival by L.G. Shen. Is there room for love in his courtroom? When she was young, Aira Roth became best friends with her housekeeper's son. Soon, friendship turned to young love. And when Aira dared him to kiss her, a chain reaction of disastrous events led to the boy being sent away and out of Aira's life. Now, two decades later, Aira is an on-the-rise publicist with her beloved father as one of the biggest client of as one of her biggest clients. So when her father is sued by a former employee, Aira sets out to prove that her father is not the monster he is accused of being. The only problem is the attorney who is determined to destroy her father's good name, Christian Miller is charming, obnoxious, and devilish, devilishly good-looking. And Aira has no idea he is that same boy who kissed her all those years ago. Past and present collide as Aira falls hard for Christian. But when she finds out who he really is, and about his obsession with getting revenge on her father, can she choose love over family? This next one is an author I read a library book from and absolutely loved the writing. I thought it was very comedic and well done. So, rather than buy the same book, which I will eventually, that I read from the library, I decided to get a different title written by the same author, and that author is Lizzie Dent, and the book I went with is The Setup. So, one summer, two men, one date with destiny. The last place very average 31-year-old Mara Williams thought she'd be is on a solo vacation impersonating her fortune teller. Yeah, her fortune teller when she finally meets the one. Joseph, a gorgeous Australian cellist, sits down for a reading, and before she knows it, she's telling him his destiny will be sitting in a pub in the English seaside town of Broadgate on the last Friday of August, and that her name is Mara. Enter Project Mara, three months to turn herself into the stylish, confident woman she always hoped to be. Meanwhile, the crumbling, formerly glamorous beachside pool club where she worked, works is under threat, and her eccentric colleagues enlist her to help save it, just as handsome new housemate casts doubts on her ideas about the one. Can Mara pull off the transformation of a lifetime, and by summer's end, will she know who is her destiny? That sounds very messy. Next up, I have a book that I pre-ordered, and mostly just because of the cover, and that is The Spell Shop. There is a cat here with wings. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but that cat has wings. <laughs> and this sounds so cute, and it has purple sprayed edges. It says, 
Kyla has always had trouble dealing with people. Thankfully, as a librarian at the Great Library of Elysium, she, Kaz, a magically sentient spider plant, has spent the last decade sequestered among the Empire's most precious spellbooks, persevering, oh, preserving their magic for the city's elite. When a revolution begins and the library goes up in flames, she and Kaz flee with all the spellbooks they can carry and head to a remote island Kyla never uh, thought she'd see again, her childhood home. Taking refuge there, Kyla discovers, much to her dismay, a nosy and very handsome neighbor who can't take a hint and keeps showing up day after day to make sure she's fed and to help fix up her new home. In need of income, Kyla identifies something that even the bakery in town doesn't have. Jam. <laughs> With the help of an old recipe book her parents left her and a bit of illegal magic, her cottage garden is soon covered in ripe berries. But magic can do more than make life a little sweeter. So Kyla risks the consequences of using unsanctioned spells and opens the island's first ever and much needed secret spell shop. Now, this next handful of books, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These next seven books I got from Target. There are two times I had to go to Target. One, I was looking for something to help cool down Georgie, who is our pug, uh, to help cool him down in the summer. So we wanted to get like a little waiting pool, which they were all sold out. I even went to Walmart, same thing. Um, and we wanted to make sure, because he's a puppy, that it was the side was low enough that he could jump in without slipping and hurting himself, but maybe next summer. <laughs> so, uh, of course, if I go to Target, I've got to check out the books. And so twice I checked for that pool to see if it came back in stock. And so twice I ended up checking out the book section. One time I got four books, the other time I got three. <laughs> so uh, this first, and these are in no particular order, just whatever is stacked here. This first one being A Thousand Heartbeats by Kira Cass. This is a young adult absolutely love the cover and I have read from Kira Cast before and I do know I like the writing. I told myself that it had been the rain. It was something hitting the mountain or a tree falling or anything else really. But every time Lennox smiled or touched me or even looked at me a certain way, I would hear it again, the sound of a thousand heartbeats. Next I have Everything We Never Said by Sloane Harlow. This cover is really interesting. So, yeah. What you don't know can hurt you. It's been months since the accident that killed Ella's best friend, Haley, and Ella can't stop blaming herself. Now Ella is back at school, and everywhere she looks are reminders of her best friend, including Sawyer, Haley's boyfriend. Little by little, they grow closer, until Ella realizes that something horrifying... Oh, until Ella realizes something horrifying. She's in love with her dead best friend's boyfriend. Racked with guilt, Ella turns to Haley's journal, hoping she'll find something in the pages that will make her feel better about what's happening. Instead, she discovers that Sawyer has secrets of his own and that his relationship with Haley wasn't as picture-perfect as it seemed. Ella knows she should stay away, but finds herself inextricably drawn to him and scared of everything she never knew about him. Perhaps it's his grief, or maybe his desires, cut short by tragedy. Or could it be something twisted only Haley knew about? One of my keywords with books is vampire. You mentioned a vampire, and I'm pretty much already sold. And then this cover is beautiful. So, Filthy Rich Vampire. And this was written by Geneva Lee. Julian uh, Rosu, I'm guessing, has a problem. He's single. And for the world's wealthiest vampires, the social season is about to begin. Julian would rather stake himself than participate in the marriage market. But as the eldest eligible Rosu, he's expected to find a wife before the season ends, whether he likes it or not. When cellist Thea literally stumbles into his life at a gala, he... Gala. Is it Gala? Meg Gala? Gala? I don't know. Gala. Uh, let's see, he, uh, he knows she's the last person he could ever fall in love with. She's too innocent, too kind, and way too human. But now that she knows about his world, she's also a walking target. She needs protection. He needs a fake girlfriend to discourage overzealous vampire matchmaking. 
So Jillian makes Thea an irresistible offer, pretend to be his lover and he'll change her life. For one year, they'll attend the season's social events together in exchange for his protection and a way out of her mother's crippling medical debt. She can't say no, but the vampire world is impossibly decadent and darker than Thea ever imagined. And Julia's filthy rich vampire family wants her out of the way. But with each moment they share, new dangers emerge. A desire as forbidden as their stolen touches. An awakening of a long dead heart and secrets that could tear them both apart. Next is You Shouldn't Have hum Come Here, written by Geneva Rose. This actually feels rather heavy. Um... It's less than 350 pages, but it feels heavy. Grace Evans, an overworked New Yorker looking for total escape from her busy life, books an Airbnb on a ranch in the middle of Wyoming. When she arrives at the idyllic getaway, she's pleased to find that the owner is a handsome man with the name of Calvin Wells, and he's eager to introduce her to his easygoing way of life. But there are things Grace discovers that she's not too pleased about. A lack of cell phone service a missing woman, and a feeling that something isn't right with the ranch. Despite her uneasiness, the two bond and start to fall for one another. However, as her departure date nears, things change for the worse. What begins as a playful romance soon turns into a complicated web of lies. Grace grows weary of Calvin as his infatuation for her seems to have morphed into obsession. Calvin fears that Grace is hiding something from him, including her reason for staying at his ranch to begin with. Vacation flings typically end in heartbreak, but for Grace and Calvin, it'll be far more destructive. That feels very ominous. This next book, the cover gives me a good girl's guide to murder vibes. Just, it just gives me those vibes. And this is How to Survive Your Murder by Danielle Valentine. Rule number one, never go into the corn maze alone. Rule number two, nothing good happens on Halloween. Number th rule number three, never be distracted by a hot bad boy. Rule number four, don't die this time. That's literally the synopsis, just those four rules. Next I have a sports car romance. I have not read a sports car romance, and so that, I thought that would be interesting. And this is Throttled by Lauren Asher. So we have two POVs. We have Noah and Maya. Underneath Noah, it says, Maya Altori is the sister of my teammate and my new obsession. Keeping my distance during the Formula One season should be easy, except I always find ways to see her. Press tours, press race rituals, sponsor events, and black tie galas. 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 I don't know. The more time we spend together, the stronger my desire grows. Sneaking around with her is one thing, but wanting more? Never going to happen. She might be a distraction dressed like a daydream, but no woman is worth risking the championship title over. Or so, I thought. And then underneath Maya, it says, Noah Slade is Formula One royalty with my brother's and my brother's biggest rival. When I'm invited to join my sibling while he com competes for the world championship, I promise to avoid Noah at all costs. 21 races, two drivers who hate each other, and one forbidden attraction I can't ignore. Developing feelings for Noah wasn't part of my plan, but then again, neither was anyone finding out. Turns out, the man I was warned about happens to be the one I can't stay away from, even if he breaks my heart once the season comes to an end. Now, one thing I have found, and I realized it when I picked this one up, the publisher is Bloom Books. I have read a handful of books that have been published through Bloom Books, and I've absolutely loved them. So... Because it's a Bloom Books novel, I am even more excited about this because I'm finding I am absolutely loving the books that they put out thus far. Okay, this next one... Uh, there's not really a synopsis. It just says... Never be forcing an introduction... Elegantly Bound Must Have Edition. So there's not a synopsis, which for this type of book, you don't really need a synopsis for. Uh, but this is You Are Your Own Fairy Tale by Amanda Loveless. This is a collection of poetry. So it's just all poems. And then there's 
some art in there as well, and that's all it is. It's just a collection, a poetry collection, so really not much to say. And it does come, so the end pages are like that. That's the front, the spine, the back. And this one actually does come with a ribbon bookmark. So, just a little navy bookmark. Okay, this next book I got from a box that I pre-ordered from, I believe it was Lit Haven Boutique. Uh, look at that pink gilded metallic edges. This is a football romance, The Bombshell Effect, by Carla Sorensen. The only downside with this book is there's no synopsis on the back, and there's actually no synopsis on the inside either. Those are the front end pages. I think the back are the same. Oh no, the back is different. This is book number one in a series. The series is called Washington Wolves. This one says, my new neighbor is a complete jerk. A tall, brooding, tattooed jerk. I tried to be nice, bake some cupcakes for him and his adorable daughter. And the only reaction I could come up with to his nice cold reception, ice cold reception was to shove those pink cupcakes right into his muscular chest. In my defense, it was a rough week. Being back in Seattle for the first time in years was hard enough. The fact that I was there for the dispersal of my father's will made it even harder. I had no intention of staying until I got a football stadium-sized surprise as my dad's final gift to me. No, really. He left me a football team. It's how I found myself in a conference room staring down the veteran quarterback who wants nothing to do with a new owner. And that quarterback, it's my tall, brooding, tattooed jerk of a neighbor. Now he's everywhere, next door with his daughter, in meetings. Not even, don't even get me started on away games. Luke Pearson is under my skin. And pretty soon, I'm not sure I want it any other way. These next two were from the Twisted Desires. These were not part of the subscription, so these were ones that you bought in addition to that. Uh, the This first one is called Camera Shy, and this is by Kay Cove. I was expecting a ring on my 30th birthday. What I didn't see coming was my boyfriend and business partner dumping me because he couldn't bear the idea of our bland sex life for the rest of our lives. When an opportunity arises to spend my summer in Las Vegas, I stumble upon my hot new neighbor and his photogra photography studio. We strike a simple deal. He is the teacher, and I'm his student. My lesson is learning to love the body I have. In exchange, I'm going to save his business. I have exactly one summer to unearth the most confident version of myself before I go home and return to reality. But after a passion-fueled summer, I'm not sure of who I am anymore, and it's clear that the worst heartbreak of my life might still be yet to come. This is gorgeous under the dust jacket. So, I can't really show you... Okay, so there's the back. It has a reversible dust jacket, but it is an NSFW, not safe for work type situation. So I'm just trying to be a little careful. And this this side's fine because it's he's wearing pants. So, but the hardcover, mm, gorgeous. And then the edges are black. They're supposed to be like roses. You can see a hint of the roses, but from far away, it just looks like black sprayed edges. So I think there was, if I remember right, with this particular book, there was an issue with the printing on that, but it looks like black sprayed edges and that's fine with me. This other one from Twisted Desires is The Shadows We Keep by Cindy Dawson. And then the sprayed edges are just like, electric board type things. Two POVs, we have Kira and Harkin. Underneath Kira, it says, it's not stalking if they put the information out there for public consumption, right? I've wanted him for as long as I could remember, but he was never mine to have. So I sat back and fantasized him behind a from behind a computer screen, resigned to never have the man my soul cra uh, craved. He wasn't supposed to know about me, but one rushed morning changed everything. 
Now the entangled web of lives, lies I've spun has ensnared him. But what will he do if he ever finds out the truth? I do anything to make sure that never happens. Too bad the universe isn't on our side. And then underneath Harkin, it says, I ran from California to New York in a moment of pure desperation to get away from her memory. I was on the path of destruction, ready to throw in the towel to quiet the berating voices in my head. But then a cab thief came crashing in into my day and my world turned upside down. My mind might be playing tricks on me, but I need to know her, possess her, consume her. But secrets and lies have a way of escaping from the shadows, revealing the hidden truths of our entangled lives. And, and then that's the underneath the dust jacket. So, and I don't think there's anything on the back. Oh yes, there is, there's a dagger. So. So this next one I got from being a member of this author's Patreon. I have since canceled that unfortunately uh, because I'm just, I do want to collect these but I don't want to keep the risk of getting duplicates because I have a lot of this author's work. So I will just keep buying from the author's website directly as a way to support the author when I'm ready to get more books from this author. Uh, this is the discrete version and as a Patreon one, the the pages are, the edges are sprayed, sprayed edges, and then it's foiling there. This one, so the discrete series, it has the couple's name on the front, which is Asher and Brianna. The only thing it has on the back, it says it's the discrete series. This book is a little bit dirty. That's the title. It's not the condition of the book. The title is a little bit dirty. These are spicy romances. Uh, this is written, written by Willow Winters, and this one says, uh, let's see, this is a second chance with a filthy-mouthed possessive hero not willing to lose the love of his life again. I've got a thing for men who work with their hands. I thought I learned my lesson years ago, but here I am back in the small town I grew up in, staring down the man who broke my heart years ago. I intended to tell him off. My plan was to flip him the bird and prove to both of us that he hadn't ruined me. I sure as hell wasn't going to sleep with him until he tells me his story, until he gives me what that smoldering look I still dream about. Until he whispers just beneath the shell of my ear, his breath trails down my neck and he leaves an open mouth kiss right there in that sensitive spot. You have no idea how much I've missed you. My treacherous heart wants more. More of him, more of us, but there's a reason it didn't work before, and when you don't learn from your past mistakes, you're bound to repeat them. Ain't that the truth? So, the one thing I do like about Willow Winter's Discreet series is that the actual title is on the inside, a little bit dirty, and the synopsis is on the page right next to it. <laughs> if more authors that did special edition covers that are more discreet did this, I'd be very, very happy, but it is what it is. So this next one is The Wallflower by Sally Louise. This is a special edition, special edition book from Probably Smut. And that's what the back looks like. That is not a synopsis. It just says, if all the books, paper and pencils suddenly disappeared from the world tomorrow, I'd be okay with it because you'd still be here. Okay, so the synopsis, I've got this pulled up on Goodreads, says, Lily Whitmore has a stereotypical people-pleasing wall is a, okay, the synopsis says, Lily Whitmore was a stereotypical people-pleasing wallflower with an inability to stand up for herself and crippling anxiety. One evening, after finding herself amid an illegal basement fight club, she discovers one of the fighters right outside her apartment, barely conscious and bleeding. So she does what anyone in her situation would do. She brings him inside, unintentionally changing her life forever. The Wallflower... Oh, okay, it says this is a slow burn, dual POV, contemporary romance filled with angst, love, self-discovery, and just enough heartbreak that will keep you wanting more. It is book one in a series. I don't know what the series is called. It doesn't say on Goodreads. So, yeah, Wallflower. 
This next one is also from Twisted Desires. Uh, this one was actually the subscription one, and that is Dollhouse by Kyla Faye. And it is part of a series, as you can see, because there is number one. There's the back, and then floral and butterfly wings, or just butterfly wings, flowers too. So flower petals and but blue butterfly wings sprayed edges. The end papers, uh, can I show you the end papers? No, I don't think I can. I think they're not safe for work. Yeah, no, um, I'm going to say no. And then that's that side, and, and then the back. All I've ever wanted is freedom. Freedom to do what I want. Freedom to be who I want. I've been controlled since the day I was born. Forced to put on a smile and pretend my life was perfect. From the outside looking in, it was. Little did anyone know, I'd been living in hell. Broken, beaten, and scared, I escaped my tormentor and ran to the one place I vowed never to return. I've been hiding in the city that holds all my secrets and was beginning to make a life for myself until they came for me. Eli, King, and Rowan. They're vicious, brutal, ruthless, and used to getting whatever they want, when they want it. Only this time, there's something standing in their way. They want me out of their city and will stop at nothing to get what they want. They said the ultimate cost of freedom is death. I should have been careful what I wished for. This last grouping of books, the last six in this video, all of these books were from my Romance Reveal subscription box. This will, was either the last one or there will be one more. I'm not quite sure. It depends on if I miss the deadline to cancel or not, or if there will be another box. So we shall see. So in no particular order, we have Love is Ale You Need by Gia Stevens. We went from fling to friend zone. Now I have to tell him he's going to be a dad. After my ex-husband left, I became a single mom and vowed never to date a guy in a suit again. Then Trey Wilson entered my life. The guy who lives in suits. He's charismatic, good-looking, and charming AF. Everything that can make any woman swoon, including me. What started as a one-night fling turned into a mid-morning office quickie, followed by an afternoon rendezvous in my kitchen, which ultimately led to the purchase of a new table. After I told him we can only be friends, he's determined to be my best friend. But the more time we spend together, the boundary between friends and benefits blur. Deep down, I know he's exactly like the others. Once they get what they want, they're out the door leaving me to pick up the pieces of my broken heart. Been there, done that, and I have a daughter to prove it. Next I have is His Last Dare, written by Ray Knight. Very shiny cover. When the bad boy and the sheriff's daughter collide, will love take over? Juniper McDaniels, better known as June, has lived her entire life shunned from her peers due to her father's position as a sheriff. No one wants to hang out with the girl whose father could throw them in jail. At the first party she's allowed to attend before starting her summer before college, she saves a life. Not just anyone's life, but bad boy Jake Jacobson, better known as JJ. The guy her father tells her to stay away from. Suddenly, June's social life takes a turn, blossoming as she becomes friends with JJ's best companions, and eventually even the bad boy himself. Can these two deny their attractions for one another or fall into the temptation of the forbidden fruit? Next is Bourbon and Bliss, written by Z. Irwin. He's more than a rebound, heating up my autumn nights. My heart could be in trouble. Police Chief Robbie Boyd has sworn to protect me. Beefing up security around me, thanks to a pathetic stocking fan, means my eyes can feast on Chief's beefy build regularly. His two sides appeal to me. The tough lawman can cuff me, take me to bed, use all his dirty words to seduce me. While the soft, sweeter man, when he's not in uniform, talks to me like I'm a normal person, not some rock star on a pedestal. Yes, he can do whatever he wants to me. I'm ready, and this is more than a rebound. The trouble is, can I trust the small town officer won't be like, 
all the other men in my life before him who can take advantage of my star status. Welcome to Kissing Springs. Next up is Something to Talk About, written by Samantha Baca. I'm guessing is how that is said. Something to Talk About. I love love. I believe that everyone is destined to find their one true love. They're happily ever after. That's why I run a relationship advice column to help those who need a little guidance. Granted, I'm by no means an expert, but it is my favorite subject, and I've spent plenty of years studying it as I've watched others fall in love. I know my true love is out there, just waiting for me to find them. In the meantime, I'm enjoying my life, running a fun little coffee shop in Whiskey Mountain and chasing around a panty-eating turtle. Don't ask. Okay, panty-eating turtle. But all of that comes to a screeching halt when a cup of tall, dark, and grumpy comes to town. All of the women are obsessed with the sexy new stranger, and I can't deny I haven't noticed how attractive he is. But when you add in his gruff exterior and the way he rejects my recommendations every time he orders his coffee black, I can't seem to think straight when he's around. Owen is the complete opposite of me. I love love. He wants nothing to do with it. I'm young and carefree. He's older and more rigid. I like flavored coffee. He likes the bitterness of it plain. We're so different that it feels like we have absolutely nothing in common. But when he starts to drop his wall and let me in, that makes me question everything I thought I knew about him. At the end of the day, he's made it clear that love is not in the cards for him. I know that I should walk away and keep looking for someone who wants what I want, but there's a chemistry between us that I'm curious to explore. Helping people find love has always been what I've done best, but this time, I might have finally met my match. So, Grumpy Sunshine Age Gap. Okay. Next up is, this is either book two or book three, uh, this and by LG, LJ Shen, Sheen, we will have seen that, you will have seen the other book in this already. This one is A Marriage of Inconvenience, is what it says on the back. Riggs Bates may be a billionaire, but he knows money can't buy happiness. He keeps his financial status a secret and takes his women the same way. He takes his meals. A different one three times a day. That's until he's caught sleeping with a married newswoman by none other than her ambitious assistant. Daphne Duffy Markham wants two things in life, marry well and stay in the States. So when her almost fiancé takes off to find himself and her work visa approaches expiration, Duffy resorts to the only thing she has left, blackmail. Luckily, Riggs needs an excuse to stay in New York as badly as she does, so the first meeting quickly leads to a begrudging engagement. Armed with strict house rules and their mutual distaste for one another, Riggs and Duffy soon find there's no denying the spark between them, or the fact that this fake marriage is starting to feel a little too real. Hmm. I have read fake dating. I have not read a fake marriage no, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, it was an Ellie Hazelwood one, and I did like it. It's very similar, except it's more, it's not just dating, it's marriage, obviously. But I did like it. Okay. And the last book in this video is Hard Hitter by Kaylee Losey. Lucy? I'm not quite sure how to say that. And this is book one in a series, as it has the number one there. Raylan Rose has it all. Almost. Great friends, a wonderful family, and a fulfilling career as one of the best physical therapists in northern Michigan. Her love life, however, is a bit lacking. After a failed engagement, she's on a bit of a hi hiatus from men and is definitely feeling the effects of her dry spell. When she catches an article about her childhood best friend, she can't help reminiscing and feeling as though she may have lost her shot at true, at true love ages ago. Meet Quinn Casey, major league all-star, hard hitter, and okay, he's kind of a sex icon. When Quinn finds out he'll be sitting out this season, he gets called back home to deal with something he thought he'd left in the past. Not only is he confronted with his beyond complicated relationship with his mother, but he's also thrown a curveball when he runs into Raylan and his first physical therapy session. It's obvious after their first run-in that there's still a lot of heat between these childhood sweethearts. But will their newfound passion be enough to make up for the past mistakes? 
Or will this hard hitter strike out in love? That sounds sweet. So baseball. I like watching baseball. I don't watch it enough. I want to watch it more. Anyway, yeah. So hard hitter. So that is it for this particular haul. Let me know. Have you read any of these books? Do any of these books sound intriguing to you? Have you read from any of these authors? Definitely let me know. Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I will talk to you later.